So I'm joined by Daryl West. He's Vice President and Director of Governance Studies at the Brookings Institution. Welcome, sir. It's good to have you on the show. Thank you. It's nice to be with you. All right, then. So, you know, so much to talk about, but I want to start by asking how much of a watershed moment was the January 6th insurrection in U.S. politics and perhaps even U.S. democracy? It was definitely a watershed moment. When you have a mob who invaded the U.S. Capitol and basically tried to prevent the certification of the 2020 election, it's almost unprecedented in American history. I mean, even if you go back 200 years, you rarely saw anything even close to something like this. So it revealed the strains in American politics. We have a high level of polarization. The hyperpartisanship is out of control. And so the mob violence was just a reflection of some of the underlying problems that we have in American democracy. And Daryl, to build on this hyperpartisanship, uh, polls continue to show uh, that only about half the country believes former President Donald Trump bore some responsibility for the riot. And many feel it's time for the country to move on. Um, does that surprise you? It does surprise me, given the fundamental challenge uh, and danger that that day represented. But the good news is that Trump's numbers are actually falling. Uh, many of his endorsed candidates in uh, last year's election actually failed to win. Uh, and so even among Republicans, there has been a substantial drop in support for uh, Donald Trump. I mean, he has announced his presidential candidacy. Uh, but it looks like there are other Republicans who are going to run, uh, and it's hard to see him uh, doing as well, given all the things that have transpired here. Mm, very fascinating. And just two weeks ago, Daryl, the January 6th House Select Committee uh, released its final report. What were some of the biggest takeaways for you uh, that may have skipped those who didn't read through all 841 pages of this tome? I mean, what the report did was one of the most thorough documentations of what actually happened that day, how it was organized, Trump's lack of action. And so people can really look at that and just see how there actually was an attempted coup d'etat in America, which, you know, it's hard to believe that that could happen, but it actually did happen. Uh, President Trump sat by for hours watching the violence unfold on national television and did nothing. Uh, so I think one of the uh, reasons why Trump is doing less well is people are now actually starting to wake up to his role in this uh, coup d'etat and basically penalizing him as well as other members of the Republican Party for being too extreme and outside the political mainstream within the United States. Mm. So as we continue to process this fallout, uh, what do you think the history books will say about January 6th, 2021? I think a lot depends on the 2024 election. Uh, in 2022, American democracy actually held very well. It was actually, uh, we had very high voter turnout, lots of voter engagement, and the results were very much pro-democracy. If that trend continues in 2024, people will look back on that in insurrection and basically say, this was a failed uh, insurrection. And afterwards, there were corrections in American politics that actually helped to restore democracy and hopefully will make the democracy uh, even stronger. So uh, that is the positive uh, message that could uh, take place. Of course, if by s some set of circumstances, Trump won uh, or a Trump wannabe uh, was elected in 2024, uh, then, of course, the historical interpretation would be quite different. 